to be the official interview now. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Cyrus Winston. I'm interviewing Greg, Greg McCune. Greg McCune. And on the topic of Pomona College's alma mater, which uh, is something of a controversy recently when anonymous fires were posted around campus and it sparked off this debate slash research effort into the topic. And, uh, can you tell me what your role in this was? Sure. Um, Getting last spring, so that's spring 08, um, I heard about this issue as all of these other students did from emails and decided to pursue it a little bit more. And I noticed that there was um, kind of a mention in one of the emails from the president that there's going to be a group formed and there's going to be research done over the summer. So I thought that sounds pretty interesting and I'd like to research this. So I didn't know what the uh, correct route is to do, so I, I responded to the email and I found out that the Hart Institute might be offering summer research grants. So I applied for successfully one of those, which encompassed research at Pomona College and then continuing on that research in New England, uh, particularly at Brown, Harvard, um, Williams, Amherst, and Yale. Unfortunately, uh, Williams was not able to accommodate me last minute, so I ended up just doing research at uh, Brown, Harvard, Yale, Amherst, um, that's, that's it. And uh, basically, I, I tried to find out the continuities and the differences between if Mitchell existed at these schools, first off, but then compared to Pomona College brand, if you will, and uh, kind of add a greater context to the whole affair. Yeah. So what did you find out when you visited those schools? Well, uh, to start with, with the Pomona stuff that I'm sure you've already gone into, I found that um, basically racially derived theater was very prevalent in this era in, in, in our school, in Pomona College. And continuing that on, I found that uh, Mitchell shows in particular were extremely prevalent and uh, that they had influenced the alma mater, which was surprised, but not surprised because I expected it from this, but the degree to which Mitchell shows were found surprised me. But I was somewhat of an uneducated um, researcher in this topic, so that wasn't really too interesting or thought provoking. But when I went back to New England, I kind of figured, oh, well, these are like liberal institutions, and this is the liberal Northeast, they won't really have this sort of thing. And in fact, I found, starting at Harvard, that they had way, way more. Um, so unfortunately, this issue that I was kind of hoping um, might be contained to a few backwoods schools, maybe, you know, Pomona College on the desert or something, actually it was definitely a national phenomenon on the, on the collegiate level as well. And that although I couldn't necessarily directly find any um, school traditions influenced by Mitchell directly, they can't it's very difficult to correctly determine the influence that they had on the student body at the time because they were, I mean, it's just the thing to do. It really was. Yeah, I mean, as, as, I, was a, as I understand it, there are different levels to this. There are professional minstrels who know how to go through the process of making the cork makeup and the exact costume. Uh, but at these colleges, they would sometimes wear suits and um, they would call it vaudeville. I saw tuxedos, yeah, things yeah. like this nature. So they, they took variants of it, which weren't actually minstrelsy per se, but they were wearing blackface. Definitely wearing blackface. So on, on that note, do you think that Pomona College was professional, or were they kind of amateur? Oh, I think they were, they were most definitely probably amateur, in that, um, at least in comparison to the other schools I saw, and in comparison to the other research I did about professional troops. By that I mean that other schools sometimes had groups that were, like there was, like at Brown University, there was like a Brown University minstrel company, and that was like a club. You know, they, they, they like read the right books, they, who knows, they might even go and see shows to like research it. And they were um, quasi-professionals in this, and to that degree, Amherst College equally had like, for maybe 20 years, a company that every year performed without fail, several professional shows in the main theaters, not on the school grounds, on the main theaters to raise money. Um, other troops traveled around the country. As far as I know, I mean, even if Pomona was, their students might have been accurately depicting it, they weren't traveling. They, they weren't really making money outside of the school community. So to that degree, I'd say that they were amateur. And at the heart of this um, discussion about it is a question of whether or not Hell Pomona Hell was written for a blackface show. Now we have the testimony from Laos, the writer of the song, and Carl Olsen, who was the editor for the 68 music book, who says he found a picture of the show. Now we may or may not have that picture since none of these pictures are really dated, but what's your thought on that as far as actually? Um, I think in the face of all the evidence you and I have both seen, the real question should be why are people trying to deny that the alma mater was almost certainly performed first in black days? Because yes. there's there's overwhelming evidence to support that it would not have surprised anyone at the time. It would have been shocking. It wouldn't have been insulting necessarily to any of the groups directly on campus. And 
I really don't think, I think when we see people who are like saying, hey, where's more proof, where's more proof, it's like, why would they have supplied more proof? It, it wasn't that big of a deal back like then. You know, there, there would have been no reason to more explicitly than we've already seen. You know? Because if you read the article that reviews the, the blackface show, they, they call it the baseball show, it's just, it's just an article and then it's on to business as usual. Like it's just another, another spot on the page. It wasn't yeah. like a big thing. No, I mean, I mean and, and that's to be expected. And the nature of the fact that it was a baseball show, and like almost all the schools I saw, it was baseball and Navy or crew that were the two sports that were most often funded by the, by these activities. And so I found that to be perfectly in line as well. Why would I say, why would, if the pattern had been for baseball fundraiser shows to be minstrel shows, and we know that the Pomona College baseball shows were minstrel shows, why should we suspect that this one show was not a minstrel show? Mm, exactly. Uh, just, just to inform you, some of the claims from skeptics is that perhaps uh, the show was not a blackface after all, even though Louse describes it as a blackface show, and that perhaps Hell Come on Hell wasn't written for that particular show, since the article that cite that Mark cites only cites one of the songs, um, which is called Blue and White. But the, the point here is that the, there have always there are like multiple sh songs with the whole school spirit thing that are named Blue and White and Hell Come on Hell, Hell Pride, that sort of thing, and. I suppose that the, what we sh really should be talking about is the school history itself and that the writer was given the trustee medal of honor in 1972 and they created a scholarship to honor him, although he flunked out after a year and um, as far as we know he was just a terrible student, which uh, I think that there should be a discussion about that and I, I'm surprised that they're focusing on some, something so minor as the alma mater, which as far as we know it wasn't really, it was never a big deal to anyone until someone tried to change it. I, I looked through the Norton papers, which are basically the papers that the deans leave behind, and he doesn't leave any executive decision about this, and he was the dean at that time, so this wasn't important to him. And there are maybe 60 boxes of Blaisdell papers, which sounds like a team effort, but um, I'm going to guess that that's probably not important either. So essentially, um, I guess my last question would be, what do you think the cost about the situation? Um, I think as it currently stands with the school, uh, with the school song suspended, uh, I think that's a prudent decision for the moment. I don't think there should be, it, it is currently suspended, correct? At graduation and commencement, yeah. Through, through so far. I think um, there is an abundance, and having researched this, there is an abundance of Pomona College history. And there is an abundance of Pomona College school songs, and there is an abundance of all, all of these resources. And the question is, why should we learn ourselves to someone that has now been tainted for whatever reason by this, when we can find a perfectly good substitute. And I think that perhaps, um, as is currently happening, that the committee that is meeting should make a judgment on it, an informed judgment, and um, the song should probably be moved on from, although not necessarily swept under the rug. But I do think it's an, an interesting topic, and I think it's important to recognize our history if we don't necessarily want to know what that history is. Okay. Oh, I'm going to shoot the last question over. I'm curious. From Christian scholarships. So let's shoot the last question. Sure. So, as a researcher and seeing the facts on about this, what do you think? What direction do you think the school should take? Um, like I was saying, I think as of now, the school's actions have been very prudent, which is the suspension of the song indefinitely until a decision can be reached. Um, that decision should be reached through a committee as is currently in existence, um, comprised of faculty students, alums, trustees if they're willing. And once that judgment is reached, I would think, as a researcher looked into this, it would become obvious that the song is of an offensive nature to certain populations now currently, you know, uh, participating in the school, and that it should be abandoned as an official school, uh, uh, as an official school song, and a suitable alternative should be found. Um, but with that said, I'd like to rem I'd like to point out that I don't think this part of the history of Pomona College.